Welcome to the month of June. Thirty days all about gin. Shining a spotlight on craft made Canadian. Fun facts and proper tastings. Live cocktails Friday afternoons. Discover fourteen different brands and be influenced by me. Some for all. That's right, I'm a song for Well, hello everyone, and thank you for joining me on this 25th day of June, my 30-day salute to gin during the month of June. Now it's Friday, and that means it's cocktail day, and I'll be playing bartender and putting together five easy-to-make at-home cocktails featuring the gins that I've reviewed and tasted this week. And folks, let me tell you what a week it has been. Very eclectic and very exciting on several fronts. It all started with the honey mead based unruly gin from BC's own Wayward Distilleries, founded by Dave and Andrea Brimacombe, not Brian, as I mentioned in the post. Dave, sorry again. Then it was on to Quebec for four out of the box innovative and creative approaches to gin. My first stop in La Belle Province was a honey and propolis infused gin from Gin Abel. Then it was on to Quebec City for a light and citrusy style Trait Carré gin and then also a whiskey barrel aged Trait Carré 1665 gin both produced by Distillerie du Québec and finally over to Sorel Tracy to those based distilleries Les Subversifs and a parsnip forward gin. Yes, folks, I said parsnip. So this has certainly been the most diverse and different approaches to gin that I've had to date during my three years of June. They're all equally interesting and equally tasty in their own right. Oh, and then again, there was also this week that little NHL hockey game last night. You know, the one where the Canadian Montreal, my home team, my home team and hometown, carved out another exciting playoff victory and one that sends them to the Stanley Cup Finals. So my little salute to the Habs here. It's probably the only time you're going to see me without my Psalm for All vest. Now, I do own two Habs jerseys, lucky in that fashion, uh, that both were gifts over the years, and I needed some help deciding which one to go with today. So I put it up on my Instagram stories. There was a chance to vote. Thank you to all who voted on my Instagram account. And this captain's jersey is the one that won out. All right, so time to dive into our cocktails. But first, if there is anyone watching who is not yet of legal age to purchase or consume alcohol where they live, I kindly ask you to now sign off. Okay, so we're going to go right away, dive in. Cocktail number one. This is the Bee's Knees using the honey mead-based unruly gin. So first, we're going to fill a cocktail shaker with ice. The most riveting part of making cocktails live. Now we do that. Next, we're going to add half an ounce of honey simple syrup. And that's just equal parts honey and equal parts water. Boiled, you know, stirred together, boiled down, cooled, and here we go. So we have our equal parts uh, honey simple syrup. There we go. Toss that in there. Next up is two ounces of the unruly gin itself. Two full ounces and we won't waste a drop. Then we're gonna add an ounce of fresh lemon juice. And I'm gonna say, in this case, go with fresh if you're making this cocktail. These guys only use fresh stuff at unruly, so it would be a shame to not have fresh lemon in there. Okay, so now we're gonna give it all a good shake over the sink. All right, now, it's a good noise for Instagram. Okay, we're gonna strain this into martini glass, whatever cocktail glass you have. I'm gonna strain that right in there, nice and easy. Make sure we get all that goodness way out. All righty, give that a dump. I'm gonna come back to that in a bit. Okay, so last step, we're gonna take a little lemon twist. 
right? I'm going to give it a little twist, get some of those oils going. I like to tie mine in a little knot as well. Pop it in, and there we have it, the bee's knees. Slunch you. You know, there's just that little bit of honey that's in there that adds a, a, a slight sweet note. But because they, uh, they add fresh citrus in the, in, the, in the gin itself, adding that fresh lemon juice here makes a big difference. Perfect balance, lovely and refreshing. I like that. That's on the summertime list for Saint for All. Okay, so salut Max Gervais. I hear that uh, you've joined me, Max, so appreciate you here. Cocktail number two is a gin biz, right? So this is a, a take on the gin fizz, the gin biz. So we're going to use the honey and propolis infused gin from Ginabelle. So we're going to take our shaker again, right? We've emptied it all out. We're going to add some fresh ice. Fresh ice. Then we're going to take two ounces of that tasty gin abel, making sure we get all of it in there. We don't want any of it to go to waste. Next, we're going to add one ounce of, again, fresh lemon juice. Then we're going to add three quarters of an ounce of rosemary simple syrup. And that, you know, my, my executive producer, what's that? So that's simple syrup. So again, equal parts sugar and water that have been mixed together and boiled down. And as you're reducing it and boiling it, you throw a little bit of fresh rosemary in there. Let it cool, stick it in the fridge overnight. Voila, here you go. So rosemary simple syrup. It's about as fancy as we're going to get today, folks. Five easy cocktails with a little bit of fanciness. But they're pretty easy. Okay, so now we're going to give this all a good shake. Again, hopefully it doesn't squeak. We're going to take off Mr. Shaker. Maybe Santa gets some for all a new shaker for Christmas. Okay. So we've done that. Now we're going to strain it. But before we strain it, we've got to add some fresh ice to a glass. It's nice fresh ice. Just a couple of cubes, not too many. Then we're going to add all of that goodness. And we want to make sure we get it all. Get it all. Come on, get in there. Alrighty. Now we have to go into Mr. Fridge and get the club soda that I forgot to take out. We're going to top this with club soda. So you don't want to drown it, right? You just want to just want to top it. Touch more. Fire him there. And now we're going to add a fresh rosemary sprig in there and a little bit of lemon as well. Pop that in there. We're going to give it a little bit of a gentle stir. There you have it, folks. The gin biz. Santé. See, that's very light. And the difference between the two gins, right? This one's made from honey, from mead. Uh, and this one is a, a gin base that has honey and propolis and a few other ingredients added. So it's a little bit lighter, right? I don't really get the sweet notes, but I still get that 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 honey scent that's in there uh, it's a bit more floral honey on the nose and the rosemary simple syrup and the rosemary in here adds a little bit of savoriness this this you want after dinner on the deck very good sorry what was that again okay so cocktail number three keep things moving right along this is the chelsea sidecar Using the dry style, right, of the Trait Carré Gin, our friends in Quebec City. So, what are we going to do? We're going to take a shaker. We're going to add some ice. But that's what we're doing here today. We add some ice. Now, we're going to take the juice of a quarter of a lemon. Depends on the size lemon you have, but juice of a quarter of a lemon. Then we're going to take the juice of a quarter of an orange. Fire that right in there. Next, we're going to add two ounces of that lovely Trait Café dry style gin, making sure we get all of it in there. Then we're going to add three quarters of an ounce of triple sec, right? Three quarters of an ounce, triple sec, right in there. We're going to close it on up. We're going to give it a good shake.
we're going to take Mr. Shaker apart. Theoretically, Mr. Shaker's getting a workout today. All right. And now we are going to take cocktail glass, martini glass. We have these. I like using these. I'm going to strain it right in there. Right in there. Get it all out. All that goodness. There we go. Sorry about that, folks. There, that was great listening. Okay, and we garnish with a little orange. There we have it. A Chelsea sidecar. Take Gary dry style gin. Cheers. See, I like that very much. The style of Tate Cathy for the dry gin, if you haven't seen the videos for any of these, I encourage you to go back. You can find them on my YouTube channel. Easy to do. Psalm for All, S-O-M-M, -M, number four, A-L-L. And the Tate Cathy dry style, it's more lighter and citrusy uh, as a gin. And that really plays very well with the lemon and the orange that's in here. It's not bitter. It's just nice and citrusy forward. Um, some of the savory notes of the gin itself comes through very well balanced. The triple sec plays really nice here. Highly recommend this one. Chelsea Sidecar. Okay, so cocktail number four. So with this one, I'm going to go a little bit rogue. Why not? All of these gin producers do things their way. That's what I love about all of them, right? They're, they're doing things their own way. They're breaking barriers. And that's what we need more of with our craft distillers. So I'm going rogue, and I'm going to make an old-fashioned using the Trait Carré Whiskey Aged 1665 gin, right? So normally old fashions you find with whiskey, blended whiskey is very common. I'm going the other way. I'm going to use their barrel aged, um, whiskey barrel aged 1665 gin. So I'm going to take an old-fashioned glass or any kind of low-ball glass that you've got. Going to add a little bit of sugar, about a cube. I'm uh, going to add a dash of bitters, any, any of your favorite bitters. I've got some Canadian bitters here, just a dash, a little dash will do you. Right. Then I'm going to add a teaspoon of water, just enough to get everything wet. Now I'm going to take my muddler and I'm going to muddle this all together without breaking the glass. Lift that up because that's a, that's a noise and a half. You want to get that all going. Put a little elbow grease into it. Okay, we're just about... Perfect. All right. So now I'm going to add two ounces, a full two ounces, of the Trait Carré gin. That color. All from the wood. No, uh, no color additives there. I talked, to, uh, I talked to Christophe, one of the owners. So all natural. Okay. So Trait Carré 1665, two ounces went in there. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take my spoon. I'm going to give it a little bit of a stir. All right? Getting up any little bits of the sugar, mixing, mixing everything, mixy mix, nicey nice. Make everybody friends in the glass. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of a cherry. I'm going to add a little bit of an orange. I'm going to grab just a few ice cubes, not many. Just a few, cool it down. Don't want to water it down, right? Give it a swirl, and here we have the old-fashioned, the Trit Carré 1665 old-fashioned. Cheers. I really like this gin, period. It's very interesting. It's very different. Barrel-aged gins can sometimes, they can sometimes be astringent with the wood, um, but this, these guys, they've done it right. I mean, all of these folks here really have a great sense of balance in all their gins. And that includes these guys at Tate Carré. So if you want to change from whiskey, you can certainly use an aged gin. And if you can find 1665, put it in here. You get those barrel spices that come out. And, you know, it's a little bit of pepper. It's a little bit of nutmeg. And it's a little bit of vanilla. It all plays in really, really well. That is very nice. A bit more of a, of, a, of a cooler weather drink, but you can certainly, the gin keeps it light enough, so you know, if the humidity's not too bad, there you go, your whiskey alternative. Thanks, Psalm, for all later. That is lovely. Okay, so we are keep things going here. We're at our fifth and final cocktail for today, 
Now this one, <laughs> this is a gin that's a little bit different, folks. This is from Les Subversifs. So they're doing things their own way as well, much like all these guys, but these guys are very innovative and very creative. And it's a very interesting and very, very tasty gin on its own. So I went to their website, and this is the Red Snapper, right from Les Subversifs website, uh, lesubversifs.ca, and using their Gin Marie Victorien. So to a highball glass, right, any kind of highball glass, we start by adding 1.5 ounces of that very innovative, tasty Gin Marie Victorien. Next, we're going to add some ice. Now, you don't want to add too much, but what you want to do is you want to fill the glass, in my estimation, about three quarters of the way up. So, I don't know, that's about 12 ice cubes, maybe, depending on the size of your cubes or what you got going on. I'll add one more. There we go. Now we're going to add 90 milliliters of Clamato. And I encourage you to get a quality Clamato, right? You don't want to, you don't want to go cheap on this. All right, for my American friends, my executive. So Clamato is, um, it's, it's, it's tomato juice with clam juice, essentially. Uh, think of Bloody Mary mix, and, but it's clam juice that's in there. It's miles ahead of what you guys got down there. Miles ahead. We know what's going on up here in Canada. All right, so now to our Clamato and our Marie Victorine gin, we're going to add two dashes of hot sauce. Take your favorite hot sauce. You add two dashes. You want to add three and be adventurous, that's fine. Then we're going to add worst. Now, the recipe on their site says two dashes of worst. I'm a big fan of the Washer Sister sauce, so I go with about, uh, with this, I'm going to go about five or six. There we go. All right. So we've got all of that. We've got the worst. We've got the Clamato, the hot sauce. Now we're going to give it all just a little gentle stir. All right. We don't want to bruise the gin that's in here. Not that it's delicate, but we want to be nice and respectful. Give it a little stir, a little stir, mixy mix, nice, nice. My toast is Emmy. We're all friends in the glass. Now we're going to add a little bit of lemon. All right, we're going to add just like that a little bit of celery. I'm going to pop that guy in there. So there we go. This is the red snapper from the good folks at Les Subversif using their gin Marie Victorin. Let's go in. We're going to have a little sip. Santé. So the secret weapon with these guys, um, and I, I mean that 1,000% respectfully, their secret weapon, their key ingredient in their gin, if you haven't seen the video, is parsnip, right? I think I said that earlier at the top of the video today. And in here, it adds that little bit of sweetness because parsnip can be sweet. As a vegetarian, I've come to really embrace parsnips and root vegetables over the last year and a half. Um, so it's a little bit of natural sweetness, not sugary sweet, and then the earthy notes of a root vegetable come through. And that all plays very well with the acid from the Clamato because it's tomato-based. It plays really well with the, with the worst sauce. And then that hot sauce just gives it just a little bit of a kick. I've had gin Caesars before. I think this one is a winner. This may be my new favorite for the summer. Max, I'm gonna have to come and see you. I'm gonna load up the Subaru. Alrighty, so here we go, folks. One, two, three, four, and five. Easy to make and very delicious cocktails featuring creative, diverse, and very tasty made in BC and made in Quebec proudly gins. So folks, this is my last live cocktail event of June for 2021. I would like to thank you all very much for tuning in, whether it is live here today on the 25th day of June or whether you're catching this on video replay. Regardless, I truly appreciate you spending time with me. Be sure that we're connected on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. There's lots more to come for June. Plus, I also talk a lot about wine and a lot about other spirits and a lot about sake and beer. So you don't want to miss out on anything Psalm for All is putting out there. And with regards to June and gin, folks, please be sure to share my social media posts using the hashtag sip with Psalm for All. And Psalm for All again is S-O-M-M -M number four A-L-L. -L. 
Life is simply too short to drink boring gin. And folks, let me reassure you 100%. Psalm for all says all of these gins here today, especially are very, very exciting. And let's not only ensure that we support our dedicated craft distillers, but also let's share these posts so that we can help our fellow Canucks elevate their own home cocktails by encouraging them to bypass those tired, old, boring, blah, international gin brands that are on store shelves and instead to put a little craft distilled Canadiana in their glass. Now, if you try any of these at home, please do drop me a line let me know what your thoughts are, whether it's on the gin itself. And I have to say this, I'm making cocktails. All of these gins can be enjoyed on their own, either as a digestif or an aperitif or with a little bit of ice. You know, they're that good. They're that complex. There's that much depth of character to them all. But they do make fantastic cocktails as well. So if you try any of these gins, you try the cocktails, drop me a line. Let me know. Until next time, folks. Be well. Stay safe. Go Habs, go. And cheers from Sound for All.